All right, so you're in for a bonus uh, episode, some bonus content here from Locked On NHL Prospects. I'm back with Sebastian Jackson for a really important discussion um, on a rather controversial uh, prospect who just recently um, had his, well, he didn't get his contract released. That's the thing. He's still getting paid, um, but he won't be joining the organization of the Boston Bruins, and that's Mitch Miller. Um, Sebastian, you do a lot of important work for the Black Girl Hockey Club, so I really wanted your insight on this and sort of talk you through it, because I've got a lot of thoughts, but um, I think having an inside voice from the Black Girl Hockey Club discuss this, uh, to discuss this with is really important. So um, first, what was your first reaction when you heard that he was drafted by the Arizona Coyotes? Let's start there. Well, you know, it did take a little bit of time to come out. I think that at the time of the draft – um, in Arizona or for Arizona that, uh, you know, this was somebody that had severe character issues. Um, mm -hmm. he was a first round talent that slipped to the fourth round. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was very clear that Arizona at the time thought they could pull a fast one. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't look good on them today because I think those th first three rounds were suspended picks mm -hmm. and then they, they picked Mitchell and then they had to rescind that pick. So, yep. Um, a draft gone to waste, um, and and for what? You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's just it, it, very disappointing, for sure. Especially with with everything that came out. Yeah, and and that's what really confused me about all this is that you know heading into that, I think everyone knew it would have been a bad idea. The news had already come out about Mitch Miller. This wasn't sort of old news. A lot of a lot of teams had him on his on, the, on their do not draft list purely on based on the character issues that he showed um you know previous to that but then you add on top of that the news that came out it was just such a it was such an obvious um omission from the draft for a lot of uh scouting teams not just in terms of the nhl circles but outside of that as well online and all that i didn't see him on any rankings so um that was the same for me it was just utter confusion and bewilderment that he was even considered um especially for a team that did not have the 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 privilege to have multiple picks and be able to take a risk like this. I mean, it just, it didn't make sense on any level to me. And I was really glad that the that pick was rescinded. And then I want your thoughts on this, but for me, it was like, it was like opening up old wounds to see him get signed by the Boston Bruins and just having, having to, to, you know, not, I'm not even part of the, the family. I'm not Isaiah. I, I And I was already sort of feeling like I had to relive, you know, horrible experiences as a fan. I can't even imagine what that entails for the family. Yeah, it's, the you know, the family was, was such an afterthought when this was, and I, you know, they should have always been at the forefront of this. I, I've, I've had conversations with, with, uh, with John and my brothers, mm -hmm. um, last year and you know she she's very accessible mm -hmm. like it wasn't like you know they had to you know call the fbi to track down information she, yeah. she's right there she 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 responds on twitter she's very interactive mm -hmm. um the fact that they couldn't anytime you gotta start a press call or a press release with an apology mm -hmm. it's a horrible idea yeah. And I think that they were like, I think that in their head, they were like, look, like we're going to get ahead of this by having him issue his apology. And this is why you need diverse voices in your room, mm -hmm. because even they would have been like, this is not enough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Boston Bruins, their image, you know, it's, it's not going to, I don't think it's going to take the hit that people think it is. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's a stain on this season now. It doesn't matter any success that they have. Mm -hmm. Um, and this was kind of a last dance season for them mm -hmm. with the start that they got. It's not unreasonable to call them a contender. Yeah. Um, no matter the, the success that they have this year, there's always going to be this thing, but yeah, it's, you know, what were they thinking? They, they, this absolutely didn't need to be done. There's, there's plenty of prospects playing worldwide that are undrafted who may not have, you know the one for one skill that Mitchell has, but maybe it's it's slightly less mm -hmm. that you could have that you could have invested in, and it when you, and even if other teams were interested, you wouldn't have had to to offer him max rookie contracts and bonuses and, yeah. and stuff. Like there's just so much to it that 
Like, and where do you start? Where do you end with with this whole like scenario? It just the boss, the Boston Bruins. Not only did they fail their organization, and and I'm not saying that we need to look for any sympathy for this kid either, because I don't have any sympathy mm-hmm. for this kid. You know, th- this Mitchell Mitchell isn't somebody who made a mistake. Mitchell Miller is evil. Mm-hmm. Like he's he, this is an evil person. And so when people are like, well, how many, you know, uh, this is a mistake at 14. No, a mistake is is skipping school and getting caught. Yeah, you know, a mistake is is telling a little white lie about hey, you know, I I clean my room when you didn't and you get caught. Like those, those are mistakes that fourteen year olds make. Yeah, almost what a decade of bullying. Not a what, not one mistake. You know, when you make a kid lick a tootsie roll or lollipop or whatever it was that is dipped inside a urinal. That's evil. That is evil. And when you, you know, when you make him say the N-word to, to, to have to sit with you and like belittle him belittle him on the daily when you know he's he's going through it already. He's he's you know it's it's just there's so many levels to it that you can't call it one mistake. And and the fact that Boston didn't do almost any research into this, that they were convinced that it was a one time incident, like like where do you even begin with that? I want to. Say, I'll say this, and 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 you know, as a as a black man in hockey, this is what disappoints me because we have very few people um, of color that we can look at in this game right now. It, you know, it's getting a little better, but we don't have um, people in premier positions that you know, like it's still it's we're still trying to to evolve here. Yeah. Um. You know, for his agent to go on to go on that podcast and say that you know mitchell and, and him had been friends and they've been texting and then to downplay how the n-word was said to him yeah um and his agent eustace king was was a black man mm-hmm. who by the way defended blackface by one of his clients you know a decade prior um it's just it makes me think from the beginning i, I do wonder if if mitchell miller um thought that he could get ahead of this by hiring uh, a black agent first off Mm -hmm. but i really didn't like the agent's approach to this not just towards the boston bruins who by the way like i'm not absolving them from any heat yeah but clearly they were misled on a few things like i think i think that we can easily put one and one together on that and say that's probably what happened yeah and then the agent tried to do damage control but going elsewhere to do that um and you know, expanding on a few other things that have been proven now to be true. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it, we can we can give Cam Neely credit for for calling uh, Isaiah and his mom, mm-hmm. and we can give him credit for the apology. Um, but he had, he absolutely needs to eat this like everybody else in the organization. Mm-hmm. But it's sad that they've done more. That that Cam Neely has done more. Um, to rectify anything that Mitchell Miller has. Yep. And that's the thing, is that the agent, the Boston Bruins, Mitchell Miller himself, and his parents and his sister, who are on Twitter, you know, sharing some pretty heinous things and saying heinous things, they're all failing him. Mm-hmm. So for the rest of time here, people know what this family's like. Mm-hmm. And they know that if they sign him, this family is going to go out in public and they're going to continue to fail him. It's going to create a lot of backlash and it's going to make them look good. So like everybody right now is, is failing Mitchell. Cause here's the thing, like there is room for him to reform here. Like Mm -hmm. there's a path back for everybody. And and I've said it before, you know, people like, Hey, can you forgive people who've been racist? I was like, yeah, Mm. yeah. Like you got to, you got to come at me with with books and what you've learned and and how you're not going to do it again and 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 not just because you have something to gain financially here, but yeah. um, there you know there there is a path back for him as much as what he did was evil, but he's he's not willing to do the work, mm-hmm. and his family's not willing to do the work. They're just going to keep playing the victim card. Yep, yeah. and. They're going to blame everybody else and they're going to blame, well, how many times does he have to pay for this mistake knowing that it's not on us or on them to make that call? It's on the Carruth- the Meyer Crothers family. Yep. Um, 
And I don't, I, I just, I don't think we're ever going to see that. And I don't know where Boston goes from here because they've still got, you know, that's probably going to end up in court. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they're going to have a PR nightmare with the NHLPA. Yeah. Um, it's, it's disgusting. And I, uh, I hope that I never have to see the kid's face again. Honestly. Ah. I, I, yeah. I, like I said, as much as there's a path back, that path doesn't need to be uh, a hockey career. Um, Yep. I feel like the family was so much more concerned with um, securing his hockey future than securing his, his integrity as a human being and, and, and actually, you know, making him a better person out of this. And that's the most frustrating part. But regardless, um, this has been your bonus episode here for, uh, for Locked On NHL Prospects with Sebastian Jackson. I'm really glad we're able to have this discussion. This has been something that's been trotting in my mind for a while, and uh, it's great to have your insight on this. Again, you can find Sebastian on a Twitter at, Sebastian, at SebJackson90, uh, and you can find me at, on Twitter at HattieK underscore scouting. Again, this has been Locked On NHL Prospects, and we'll see you next time.